In this classwork, we're learning how to solve equations that have roots in them. The first thing we got to figure out is basically how we undo a root. The way that we undo a root is by squaring both sides. So when I look at a and b on these simplify the expression problems, really all I'm doing is reinforcing the idea that a squared and a root are inverse operations that undo each other. So if we square something under the square root, what was under the root comes outside. In this case, y is under the root, so just y is the answer to the question. Here, when I'm squaring the root of x minus 8, all of x minus 8 is under the root, so when I square the root, the root and the square go away, and the x minus 8 comes outside. When we go to solve equations that have roots in them, our goal is to isolate the root on one side of the equation, then square both sides. We just have to make sure when we do that that the root's equal to a positive number, not a negative number, because if it's equal to a negative number, the answer would be no solution. So for this first one, we have a root that's equal to a positive number. That means we can do the next step of squaring both sides. When I square the left-hand side, exactly what happened above happens here. The squared and the root undo each other, so it just becomes x minus 1 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, 5 squared is 5 times itself, or 25. I now know x minus 1 equals 25. To solve for x, I just add 1 to each side, and I get a final answer of x equals 26. If I wanted to plug that back in, I'd see that 26 minus 1 is 25, and the root of 25 does equal 5. In b, I currently have the root with something else on the same side, so I need to move that positive 7 by subtracting 7 from each side. That gives me the root of 9 plus 2x equals negative 7. I could start squaring both sides to try and solve for x, but hopefully I recognize, well wait, this is a situation where I have a root equal to a negative answer. Can't happen. If you have a root equal to a positive answer, you can square both sides and go from there. If you have the root equal to a negative answer, you need to recognize this is not possible and write it as no solution. For this bottom problem, I have the root with a positive 4 right now. To get the root isolated, I'm going to subtract 4 from each side. That's going to give me the equation r minus 4 equals the root of r minus 4. If I now square both sides to undo that root, when I square this side, the squared and the root both go away and just leave me with r minus 4. When I square this side, I need to remember that it really means r minus 4 times itself. r times r gives me r squared. Minus 4 times r gives me minus 4r. Minus 4 times r gives me another minus 4r. And then minus 4 times minus 4 gives me a positive 16. It's still all equal to r minus 4. When I combine like terms, I'm left with r squared. The two negative 4r's combine to give me negative 8r plus 16 equals r minus 4. I can now subtract r and add 4. Subtract r and add 4. Now I'm left with r squared minus 9r plus 20 equals 0. When I go to factor r squared minus 9r plus 20, I put my two parentheses in. r and r. First sign is negative. Second sign is a positive, which tells me same. Same as a negative is another negative. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 20 and add to 9. The ways to multiply to 20 are 1 and 20, which would give me 21 when added, 2 and 10, which would give me 12 when added, or 4 and 5, which would give me 9 when added. So 4 and 5 are the correct pair. I'm going to put the larger one here, the smaller one here. That tells me that if I put in 5 as r here, I'll get 0 and make this true. Or if I put in 4 as r here, I'll get 0 and make this true. So the two solutions I have for r are 4 and 5. If I plug these back into the original, 4 equals 4 minus 4 under the root plus 4, 
Well, 4 minus 4 is just 0. The root of 0 is 0, so I would get 4 equals 4. If I plug in 5, 5 equals the root of 5 minus 4 plus 4. Well, 5 minus 4 is 1. The root of 1 is 1. And 1 plus 4 does give me 5. So both are valid solutions that I can count as not extreme solutions, but actual solutions to this problem. When you have a root on either side of the equation, like d, as long as they're each isolated, I can just square both sides and get rid of both roots. So on the left, I'm left with 5t plus 2. On the right, I'm left with t plus 42. If I now subtract t, subtract t, subtract 2, subtract 2. On the left-hand side, I'm left with 4t. On the right-hand side, I'm left with 40. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get a final solution of t equals 10. You'll see that if I put a 10 in here, 5 times 10 is 50, plus 2 is 52. If I put a 10 in here, 10 plus 42 is 52. So they both be equal to the root of 52, which means that it is a true statement, and that is my correct answer. In part E, I just need to add 2 to each side. Then it becomes the root of x minus 6 equals 5. If I square both sides, it becomes x minus 6 outside of the root equals 25. I can then add 6, add 6, and get an answer of x equals 31. If I put the 31 back in, 31 minus 6 is 25. The root of 25 is 5, and 5 minus 2 does equal 3. So this is the correct solution to the equation. For the final problem on this classwork, I have the root isolated on the right, so I can square both sides. When I square the left-hand side, it becomes x squared. When I square the right-hand side, it goes out of the root and becomes x squared minus 2x plus 14. If I try and take everything to the right, I'd subtract x squared, subtract x squared, and both x squareds would drop out of the problem. At this stage, since I only have the single power of x in the problem, I want to take letters to one side, leave numbers on the other. So I'm going to add 2x here, add 2x here. That's going to give me, on the left-hand side, 2x. On the right-hand side, these will go away and just leave me with 14. So that when I then divide by what's in front of the x2, I get an answer of x equals 7. If I plug this back in, 7 squared is 49. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Negative 14 and positive 14 cancel each other out. So I just have the root of 49. The root of 49 is 7, which was what was on the left-hand side. So this is the correct answer to the problem.